to loop or not to loop? That is the question. Don't worry, we're not going to be that dramatic and that theatrical in this video, but we're going to talk about lube because a lot of people have a question about what lube to use where on your diving equipment. So in this little video, we'll go over a short rule of thumb about what kind of lubrication to use where in your diving equipment. Yeah, so as you can see, there's a lot of different lubrications on the market for different applications. Um, so let's first talk about the basics. Uh, a general rule of thumb is when we're talking about O-rings that need lubrication, it's very easy to remember. A static O-ring, meaning an O-ring that's not in movement, usually doesn't need lubrication. Um, a dynamic O-ring, an O-ring that's moving in a shaft or that's being glided up, up against something else, that usually needs lubrication. All right, so here we have some example of some O-rings that are static and O-rings that are dynamic. So let's look at the static O-rings. This, for example, O-ring that sits on the head of the light canister right there, this O-ring here, is a static O-ring because it is going to sit just flush up against the seat here and it being held down by these uh, Nielsen latches so it creates the seal. Now it's not rubbing up against something or sliding through uh, an orifice or something like that. Um, so this one just needs to be kept clean and needs no lubrication. Another O-ring that's static that we're all familiar with is the O-ring in your DIN connector of your first stage. That's a static O-ring that just gets screwed in and seats against the, 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 boat, the butt of the valve inside the valve. And that also doesn't require any lubrication. Then we have the O-rings that are in a light, a light like this, which has two O-rings on the housing here. And when you, when you close this light, the light head will actually slide over the O-rings there. Uh, in this case, it's a twist to turn on and twist to turn off light. So constantly when you're turning on and turning off, this surface on the inside of the head will slide back and forth over the O-rings. And those are dynamic O-rings. Another good example of a dynamic O-ring is the one that connects into the hose of your second stage. So if you look inside the hose of your second stage, you can see there's an O-ring there. Now, as soon as you put your second stage in there, you're able to turn the second stage. So the O-ring is creating a seal, but it's under dynamic load. So the inside of this surface here is constantly rubbing on that O-ring. So therefore it's a dynamic O-ring and will require some lubrication. Now when we look at valves on our cylinders, um, sometimes you see people put lubrication on the tank neck O-ring. And I would advise against that because A, it's a static O-ring. Once it's connected, it doesn't move. Uh, and B, it actually increases the risk of this O-ring being pushed out um, and, and create a dramatic loss of gas because it'll it'll be a non-fixable problem underwater. So this O-ring, do not lubricate that O-ring. It just needs to be a good quality, clean, dry O-ring. It also depends a little bit on what kind of valve, uh, or sorry, what kind of seat there is on the cylinder. Some, cylinder, some cylinders have this conical shape where the O-ring kind of gets pushed down into, and they're even more at risk of an O-ring popping back out if they're lubricated. Other seats have this stepped design, um, uh, and that obviously poses a less risk, but requires the O-ring to have a better fit. On the other hand, the little O-rings that sit inside the manifold, because the manifold is able to turn, they need lubrication because they are dynamic. So when it comes to O-rings, easy to remember rule, 
dynamic o-ring needs lubrication a static o-ring doesn't need lubrication obviously there are some exceptions to certain rules but in general that's a good rule of thumb to go by so that's for o-rings what do we need to lubricate when it comes to o-rings uh, what are the other things in our diving equipment that might need lubrication well those can be zippers on our dry suit or wetsuit for that matter or it can be uh, zippers on our bags we're going to use the zippers we have on our dry suit are either a plastic zipper or a metal zipper the plastic zippers um, are super user friendly because they don't need as much uh, lubrication and care uh, the plastic teeth are just there just need to be kept clean and the best way to do that is just with a little bit of soapy water and a, an old toothbrush to keep the teeth nice and clean especially here at the area where it closes off and and that should do the trick it's a good idea however to lubricate right where it closes off but be careful in using silicone here because uh, the silicone can if you use too much of it penetrate the areas of your suit around it and when it comes time for example to repair or replace your zipper that fabric can be completely saturated with silicone and becomes a nightmare to get that rinsed out for the new glue new adhesive to actually adhere to the stuff to the material so when we dive into what kind of loop to use where in a minute we'll go over what you can use in this case. For the metal zipper, uh, they need two kinds of lubrication on the outside and on the inside, and we'll touch on that in a minute as well. And then finally, uh, you yourself also need some lubrication every so often. Um, we have a product here uh, that's made uh, for people who drive in wetsuits, free divers, for example. They either use some kind of baby oil or soapy water, neoprene suits that are very, very close to the skin and very fragile. So they need some lubrication for, uh, for easy entry and, uh, and, and removal of the suit. So let's quickly go over the different lubrications we have and what we can use where. Again, an easy rule of thumb is if it has to do with breathing gases, use oxygen compatible grease. There's no reason not to. So even though you're not going to use it with nitrox or pure oxygen or whatever, it's a good idea to use an oxygen compatible grease or oil. That way uh, you're, you're sure that nothing will ever happen from a safety point of view. But there's also other benefits to using that kind of lubrication. Um, when it comes to breathing gases. Uh, basically, you can either use uh, an oxygen compatible oil. In this case, it's from Narctet 90. Uh, it doesn't come cheap, but it's a very good product uh, and it lubricates very nicely without leaving any kind of residue. Um, I use that on all my uh, parts on my rebreather, for example. All the O-rings, inside the BOV, inside the head, everything gets lubricated by that stuff. It's super easy to clean off, it doesn't collect too much dirt, and like I said, it doesn't leave a residue. So I like that stuff a lot. Um, another good uh, oxygen compatible uh, grease is, in this case, Crystal Lube from Beaver. But it's a pearl fluor based lubrication. It's hydrocarbon free, meaning, and that's the reason why it is oxygen compatible. And I use that on everything that has to do with regulators. So the inside of the hose connector, like I just showed you, um, all the parts when we surface our regulators gets lubricated by with crystal loop. And, and uh, everything that basically has to do, the inside of the valve of your cylinders gets also crystal loop. As, apart from the fact that it's oxygen compatible and it doesn't matter if it gets into a high oxygen environment, the, the other benefit is that it has a much wider range of uh, application when it comes to temperature. Um, if you use silicone grease, for example, it has a much narrower temperature range uh, where it gets either very runny or very, very stiff when it comes to if it's warm or if it's cold. Uh, the pearl fluor based lubrication and the oil both have a much more consistent uh, consistency <laughs> uh, when it comes to temperature differences. 
And we as divers, we have a huge temperature variance, right? We're coming into our car where it might be, you know, 90 Fahrenheit. I think that's about 30 degrees uh, Celsius. And then we jump into the water, which is about 10 degrees Celsius, which is something else Fahrenheit up here. Um, so, so we put our equipment through a huge variance. And in the winter time, especially here up north, it can go crazy. You know, it's called minus 20 on the surface and then five degrees in the water and then back in the car it's 20 25 degrees again so it, it's it, it really fluctuates so having a, a, a lubrication that's more consistent regardless of the temperature is a benefit um, so oil or crystal loop when it comes to breathing gases so silicone grease silicone grease gets used on all the other components all the other o-rings that are dynamic but are not into contact with our breathing gases. So I use silicone grease on the O-rings for my lights um, or on or Vaseline grease on the scooter O-rings uh, and stuff like that. I use the silicone spray on the zippers of my my um, my dive bags and, and that's and that's about it. So when it comes to silicone grease uh, it's, it's, it's a very good synthetic lubricant but uh, again be careful when you get into, into contact with stuff you might need to glue on later on in in the life of that product like for example when you replace zippers on your dry suit um, so let's move on to the next and we have this um, lubrication products that are made for dry suit zippers um, then we have the zip tech which is kind of like a more soft uh, almost like a lip balm kind of thing and that's actually what I use on uh, on my dry suit zipper right there where it closes it's actually paraffin and silicone free and it's a it's a very good uh, lubricant that that very uh, has a very long life it maybe i do it every 10 dives or something when you have metal zipper a metal zipper works a little bit different than the plastic zipper uh, in the fact that the slider on the outside of the uh, the suit basically slides over chunky metal bits and they can be treated with wax either beeswax or, or something like in the other uh, or something in that order i put that on the outside of the metal zipper on the inside uh, the teeth are much smaller and they're actually uh, hooking into each other and making the rubber parts of the of the zipper create the waterproof seal now those teeth are a bit more fine and they need a bit finer uh, lubrication. You can either use something like Ziptec from Magnet or a more uh, liquidy kind of lubrication on the inside of your metal zipper. That way it'll keep a um, uh, much easier operation and a better life. With On the zipper uh, uh, topic, don't just go and cut all the ways, loop, 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 loop and never clean. Because think about it, if it's a bicycle chain, uh, all lubes you put on are a little bit sticky by nature. So they will attract dirt and sand and salt and all that sort of grime. So if you just keep applying lube and never cleaning it, you're going to actually wear down your zipper much faster. And then it's better not to lube at all. Um, so do yourself a favor. Take a toothbrush or a nail brush and, and clean that zipper every so often. Uh, so you're keeping it nice and clean. It's a bit when it comes to um, the other lubrications, uh, let's talk about uh, the Vaseline. Vaseline lubrication can be used in the similar fashion to silicone grease. Um, uh, and for example, Zuex on their scooters, they advise to use Vaseline grease on the O-rings. Um, they just feel it has a better uh, performance. Um, after talking to them, I wanted to know why we couldn't use silicone grease because in, in, in effect it kind of does the same. It's a different base. Regardless of all the things I tell you, always, always, always look at the manufacturer's prescription with regards to what you should use for kind of lubrication. Um, these are just general rules for diving equipment. So before we look at the other uh, two products, um, how much 
is enough lubrication. And sometimes you see people, they just goop lubrication all over the place and it's just not necessary. You, you want the lubrication there to just help protect the o-ring and you don't need to completely cover it in, in, in silicone grease or any kind of other grease. Just if you're using o-rings for your lights, just make them so they're shiny. If you see lumps of silicone grease or Vaseline grease or whatever hanging over, it is too much. The, the best way to put some grease, for example, on the o-rings of this light is just, uh, just by having a tiny little bit on your finger and just moving it over the o-rings so that they're shiny. They don't need more than that. Now, every so often it's like, no, I just cleaned this the other day, but every so often it's a very good idea to take the o-rings out carefully and completely clean the groove in which the o-rings sit uh, with a lint-free cloth and then, you know, put the o-rings back into place. Now these final two products, the Hawkeye amongst you must have seen I have talcum powder here and I want to address that as a little bit of an extra tip because many people don't understand why we use talcum powder on our seals of our dry suit. You see them putting talcum powder on the seals and use it as a type of lubrication to get easier in and out of their seals, uh, the neck seal and the wrist seals. And obviously that helps. So it can be used for that. So you put less stress on your, on your seals. So by all means, keep doing that. But again, like a lot of people, a lot of people don't know, the talcum powder actually helps to stop deterioration of your seals when your suit is in the shed or hanging, waiting till your next dive. So I would suggest when you come back from a dive, clean your suit. When the suit's dry, apply talcum powder to your seals, especially if they're latex seals and let it sit with talcum powder on there. Your latex seals get attacked by the, uh, by, your, by the oils of your skin. And if you put the talcum powder after you've cleaned your suit, it's very unlikely that you rinse the inside of your seal from your dry suit, right? So if you put the talcum powder on your seals, it stops that effect of the skin oils to deteriorate your suit. So the talcum powder helps prevent uh, premature aging of your uh, latex seals. So little bonus tip on the side. Now wetsuit lubrication is super nice to to have if you do dive with wetsuits that are a bit tight. Put it around your ankles, your arms, your shoulders and it, it just eases uh, your suit into place. Um, I have a, a wetsuit I use for swimming in the open water and I use that on my ankles as well because when I want to take the suit off and it's very it's the skin neoprene, it, it's just a hassle. Uh, and 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 using a product like this just helps helps the process along. Uh, again, you can also use baby oil, uh, but I just prefer to use this. It's less oily and it washes off easier. All right, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video. Let me put all this stuff back together now and back where it came from. Uh, it was just my five cents on on what kind of lubrication to use where in what scenario um, preparing for a little uh, little trip to teach an essentials class so when I was gathering all my stuff I got inspired to use a little bit of time to um, to make this little video again please use common sense read your user manual of the equipment and use the manufacturers subscribed lubrication method. These are just quick rule of thumbs to help you guide yourself through all this lubrication and not make potentially costly or risky mistakes. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, remember to, uh... oh yeah, that, that's what I mean. Remember that and uh, we'll see you out there guys. Stay safe. Yeah.